Joining me right now to look ahead is AFPI senior fellow and chairman of the China Policy Institute uh, initiative, rather, pardon me, Steve Yates. Steve, it's good to see you. Thanks very much. Good morning. Um, the last few times that you and I have spoken about meetings of a U.S. delegation in China, our uh, people in Washington were dressed down by the Chinese uh, uh, officials in their categories. What are you expecting from this meeting? Well, this is, as you say, supposed to be follow up from the two leaders meeting in Bali. Uh, when you look at who's going to be going, in some ways, it's a routine delegation. You usually have the assistant secretary level across the bureaucracies go, uh, and they'll have, you know, kind of measurement of the rooms and it, the initial screening of different discussion topics. The problem is these aren't ordinary times. Between the time when the leaders met and when this delegation is going and potentially Secretary Blinken going, we had massive nationwide demonstrations demonstrations against China's COVID zero lockdown policies. And at this point, you can see that the accommodationist policies that have been traditional in the U.S. government are out of step with the Chinese people. The long-suffering Chinese people have said enough and have started to push back. And there's hardly been any kind of clear signal from the Biden administration how their policy is going to change to reflect this new reality. Well, I mean, I think that's right. And, you know, you're talking about a continuation of bad behavior on the part of the CCP. Does anybody from the U.S. side ever bring up things like the origins of COVID-19, the cover up of the C by the CCP of of COVID in the early months as it unleashed this on the world? How about the continued year, a decade long plus uh, theft of intellectual property, human rights abuses, not to mention uh, the provocation in to uh, international waters and, and approaches to Taiwan. Is any of this going to come up? Uh, you have a perfect list of things that they don't tend to bring up, uh, because if they took those issues seriously, they would question whether there's any utility in having this kind of meeting right now anyway. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party has proven to be an enemy of the Chinese people, as witnessed in those demonstrations and pushback from their own people. They attack our interests, whether it's the, the freedom-loving people in Taiwan, our allies in Japan, and even us. Uh, I don't think that they're going to be bringing up the manipulation of our youth by way of technology and data mining, uh, and they're probably also not going to be bringing up how they ha in exercised the largest, most significant information operation on the United States uh, in terms of what they did by manipulating tech, the media, and others through right. recent years in agitating in America. I mean, you have a, a, a former uh, director of national intelligence with me yesterday, John Radcliffe, and saying that TikTok represents mass manipulation. And our kids are still using it. I mean, now the Biden administration is defending, uh, sending an award, $200 million grant to a company called Microvast. This is a Texas-based lithium battery company uh, who does primarily its business in China. Just one of the 20 American co companies to receive funding from a program designed to boost U.S. battery production in the $1 trillion infrastructure package. Uh, in the third quarter, 69 percent of Microvast's revenue was generated in China and just 3% from the United States, Steve. So once again, more evidence of this soft on China policy and sending business to China. All those electric vehicles that this administration is, pu is pushing, the batteries and so much more made in China. And now we see uh, in the infrastructure package, which is supposed to be infrastructure in the United States, $200 million went to Microvest. Your thoughts? No, it's outrageous. It just it just proves that the the Congress uh, is ability to spend just vastly outpaces any reasonable person's ability to do due diligence. So they're not protecting the interests of the American people. They're not protecting the interests of developing American business. Uh, and it just emphasizes the point that you mentioned. John Ratcliffe is an outstanding colleague, uh, but Ambassador Lighthizer, another colleague, has been adamant about the need to strategically decouple those parts of our supply chain that are vital to our way of life. So if the administration believes what it says and that these batteries and other kinds of energy sources, technology sources are vital to our way of life, then we need to be migrating those away from China and the CCP's control. We can't have them with potential leverage over our livelihoods going forward.
But what are we waiting for? I mean, there are right now more than 50 Chinese police stations across the world. There is a police station in New York run by the CCP, and it's just operating there as its own police station in New York, in America. When we have our own police, uh, we're doing nothing about it. Are we waiting for the tanks to go reverse on America, the tanks to, to, to go into Beijing the way they did on Hong Kong? Look at pro-democracy Hong Kong media tycoon Jimmy lie. Now he's facing a sentencing of more than five years in prison for fraud, claimed fraud over a sublease at his media company, Next Digital. Lai is also facing a uh, national security trial, which was scheduled for the beginning of the month. It's been postponed. But Steve, it's certainly looking increasingly like this man is going to spend the rest of his days in jail in China. Why? Because he's a freedom fighter and was trying to push for independence the way the CCP promised in Hong Kong? Uh, J Jimmy is unique. Uh, we both know him. He's, he's an amazing human being. He exemplifies everything that is supposed to be good about the free world, risking everything twice to build enormous business empires that helped a lot of different people, has a big heart and was big success. That kind of example outside of the birdcage of the Communist Party of China and their control just couldn't be allowed by them. Uh, this recent fraud conviction is a farce. It's sort of like convicting someone for conducting a, a moonlighting uh, operation in uh, like a hair salon or something like that. Uh, it's a ticky-tack traffic violation kind of foul. Five years is outrageous, but that's just an appetizer for the national security trial where they want to demonstrate total control. It's really dangerous how these policies have put America in such a vulnerable position when you have such enormous forces out there like the CCP working against freedom and liberty, Steve. That's why we keep a spotlight on this subject. Uh, we appreciate your uh, talking with us about it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, Maria. All right. Steve Yates joining us. Quick break. And then